Hello! Welcome to this week's reading vlog, which will cover January 8th up through January 14th. Now let's see how it goes. Tuesday, January 9th. Very happy of how productive I was today. Only read a little bit of Soul Smith and a little bit of Jaws. because I was finishing up getting all the furniture moved, and I'm very proud of myself because I did it all by myself without interrupting the wife and the baby and the toddler. It's pretty hard to move a deep freezer by yourself without emptying it, that's for sure. So almost ended my fight career by moving around furniture, but it was worth it. And now I have three, perhaps even four different angles for videos, which is very exciting because one of my goals for this year is to film at least 200 videos. And I'm going to need changes of scenery. So, good stuff. Good news with that. Thursday, January 11th. Very excited about this day because several things happened. I edited my video that outlines my seven goals for 2024, my seven goals for the channel, which includes my reading goals, how I'm going to improve upon the mistakes of last year, what things I'm going to try to avoid, all that jazz. So link to that video in the description below. Today was also very special because it was a sparring day and I had four really good rounds and I got my butt handed to me for round number five. So yeah, probably the worst butt whooping I've had in some years, which is kind of exciting as you know, a professional fighter and a, and a martial artist. Because the more skilled I get, the more experience I gain, the less, the, 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 the slower my rate of improvement, the slower my, the rate of my growth. And I just, I sparred a lot of really good people the past 10 years. You know, UFC fighters, ranked people, title contenders, champions, I sparred. And I'd very rarely have those rounds where I'm like, dude, what the heck was that? So got my butt whooped and I'm very happy about it because no concussions, no marks on my face, and it was a great learning experience not to get complacent and to always know who you're sparring because sometimes you may think you know all the good fighters, but you don't. You definitely don't. So today, lessons all around in that respect. So that was a good time. And I think that's one reason why I'm enjoying the Cradle series so dang much. Because it follows sacred artists, which is basically like martial artists in this world. There's many, there's a plethora of paths each sacred artist can follow in life. And they give you different techniques you can use to defeat your enemies. So similar to Naruto in that respect, or like Naruto and learning Jitsu, you know? And one thing you should know about most martial, most mixed martial artists is we're not, we're not really jocks. We don't really belong in the jock category. We're nerds who liked violence, and that's like the center of the Venn, Venn diagram is MMA fighting. So I'm reading Cradle, and the mentor characters he bumps into, they're always giving him like little life lessons about self-improvement, about refining one's technique, refining one's art. And it's resonating very strongly with me. I'm like reading these, I'm reading this series, and I'm like, dang, writing that down. That's a good thought, that's a good, you know, lesson to meditate on. So I definitely think some videos I'm going to be doing for the year are my favorite quotes from each cr installment of the Cradle series and how, and like the quotes I like from the perspective as a professional fighter and how it's influencing my life and the things that makes me think about. So that's kind of exciting. I have some ideas for some content. But yeah, today, got a video prepared for tomorrow. Um, got my butt whooped, enjoying Cradle. I'm excited to finish Jaws tomorrow. I'll explain more about that after I conclude it. So yeah, let's get it done. Friday, January 12th. Almost finished Jaws today, which is a very interesting, compelling work about how changes in human civilization, especially with changes of the past 150 years, led to us living in an unnatural environment that made our bot our mouth our bodies particularly our jaws and our mouth and our teeth evolve in you know inefficient bad ways mainly 
our jaws are smaller because we don't grow up chewing things that are harsh and difficult to chew on. So uh, that way our jaw does not expand and drop forward, thus crowding our teeth. When our teeth are crowded, our tongue is crowded, which covers the airway, which leads to a lot of restlessness, bad sleep, sleep apnea, obstructions, hypertension, all these things. This book has a lot of little tips and things to do, with, particularly, particularly for young children, but also for adults about lifestyle changes and drills and exercises you could do to kind of counteract those changes that have happened in human civilization, mainly keeping your mouth closed while you sleep, when you breathe, when you're eating, having proper resting posture for your tongue, like tongue against the palate, you know, teeth slightly touching, stuff like that. Other exercises, a lot of things I've been naturally doing to get over my like lisp. I have, I've always had like, a little bit of a tongue tie and trouble pronouncing certain words. So this book, I was like, yeah, makes sense. Hasn't been proven because, you know, if you could say like, we can make most orthodontics, mo most orthodontic treatments, you know, irrelevant and not necessary, just with a few lifestyle changes that don't cost any money, that shut down a multi-billion dollar industry in America. So yeah, the conspiracy theorist part of me agrees wholeheartedly with this book. I was going to film a book review video today but the kids did not go down easy. I already have a video prepared, Pram by Joe Hill, so link to that video in the description below. But yeah, I'm liking the whole idea of having videos drop Friday, Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. I'm going to try that for January, but I think that's a really good schedule for me. I think it works well with my, with like my training and being a dad, all that jazz. Saturday, January 13th. I finished Jaws and started another work of nonfiction, Rick Rubin's The Creative Act, A Way of Being. And one of my favorite quotes from it so far, I'm pretty early in the work, is, Living life as an artist is a practice. You are either engaging in the practice or you're not. It makes no sense to say you're not good at it. It's like saying, I'm not good at being a monk. You are either living as a monk or you're not. We tend to think of the artist's work as the output. The real work of the artist is a way of being in the world. I'm really liking that. I don't follow Rick Rubin's music. I'm going to be honest. This just came up in my recommended books on Kindle. And I'm enjoying it very much. It's definitely giving me very strong The War of Art vibes. But yeah, this will, be the, this will probably be like one of the last books I finish in January. I plan on just chewing little pieces of this book for, for the rest of the month. I have 80 pages left of Unsold. I finished Jaws, so probably it'd be an easy two book week. Filmed a lot, moved the library over, quite happy, and also read a nice book about the life of an artist. And whether or not, depending on your point of view, like martial artists aren't real artists, I definitely think we are. Because martial art is, a way, is an art of self-expression. It's a way of expressing oneself. No martial artist, you know, fights in the exact same way as another and yeah so yeah I'm really enjoying Rick, Rick Rubin's book for sure yeah definitely if you're a fighter or you're an artist or you're just any type of creative individual I think you'll like this book like I'm liking it Sunday January 14th I finished Soul Smith and I and I enjoyed the first installment but I enjoyed Soul Smith much more. Soul Smith introduced a very cool, kind of crazy, kind of maniacal character. And I love this character. It's a mentor character. And throughout the entirety of his presence in Soul Smith, he's trying to get his students killed. Whenever they're encountering danger, he's upping the stakes because he wants them to encounter great challenges. So that way they can grow into the best sacred artist they can be. And it got me thinking about Thursday, because as I mentioned before, I got my butt whooped on Thursday. But that was because so much work was being done for the past few months to get my butt, my butt whooped on Thursday. So ever since I moved to Extreme Couture, I'm reunited with Sean Strickland, who I met when we were both training at Syndicate. But at Extreme Couture, they spar a little bit harder. And for the past two months, three-ish months, every time I spar, Sean Strickland's trying to get my sparring partners to kill me. Even more so than you usually try to do when you spar somebody. And he's trying to get me to kill them. Because he says, I need hard rounds. He talks about how talented I am. I just need to have hard rounds. I need to beat up my friends. Because that's what good friends do when you're on a fight team. 
And a guy I finally got whooped on Thursday, and he was super excited. He's like, you needed that. That's the rounds you need. And I was like, dude, I got beat up. Uh, my, 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 my brain is ringing. I, tinnitus. All the bad signs. And then I've been thinking about it. I'm like, I was very thankful for that. Because I don't get pushed like that anymore. And in some ways, Strickland is my crazy mentor character. And he's just trying to get me to encounter challenges to cause growth. At least that's what I'm hoping he's trying to do. So yeah, so all parallels between Soul Smith and what's going through, what went through my life this week. 393 pages done for this week, which isn't that good. But Jaws is nonfiction. I had to keep rereading sections because I didn't want, I wanted to make sure I understood it. So that's five books overall, three manga, two book, two novels, and I finished one of my priority reads. So I just have four more priority reads left, which includes 13 volumes of Attack on Titan, and then my other three um, priority book reads for January. So pretty productive week, two weeks into the year, five books down, being very productive, having good training, and I'm very satisfied this week. I'm very much loving The Cradle Journey. I definitely think I may even finish The Cradle series before July, which would be pretty impressive. So, yeah, not too much happened because I was moving over the library and getting the books all organized, at least as organized as I can do it while getting distracted with the toddler and the newborn. But yeah, this week was okay, but next week will be better. Thank you guys for watching this week's reading vlog, and I'll talk to you guys next time.